Here are nine ways to reverse drought, restore rivers, and reduce flood and fire. And around the world, we see the communities are in crisis. Whether it's from flood coming through and destroying infrastructure in cities, drought causing crop failures, or fire incinerating what remains of the landscape. And it's causing huge quality of life issues. People are losing their homes, losing their landscapes, losing their livelihood, losing their crops, and it's leading to different starvation crises. And then people with no water and no way to produce a viable livelihood, no way to do agriculture, they're being forced to become refugees, to move to other areas where they can find a way to live. And so it's causing refugee crises, wars, all these really big quality of life issues for humans around the world that are stemming from water. And so there are really simple things that we all can do, no matter where we are, to help reverse these cycles, to reverse the drought, to restore the health of our rivers and landscapes, and to reduce the flood and fire we experience. The first way is to infiltrate water into the earth to give water space, to lengthen the flow path that water takes, and to decentralize water throughout the landscape. So the first piece is to give water space. We've taken away so much space from water. We've drained wetlands into our arable soils. We've developed wetlands into cities and hardscapes. We need to start giving space for water. Find areas in the margin where we can let water collect and infiltrate into the ground so that it can vitalize that landscape. And it's important that we don't hold this water separate from the earth, that we return it to the earth, that we make these water bodies with earthen materials so that we can give water space to restore the hydrology in the ground. And it's really important that we do this work decentralized, that we hold little bits of water all throughout the landscape. It's not about draining all water to certain areas and holding it in these big reservoirs, but about returning it to the earth all over the landscape. This is how we can really restore the biosystems and restore our climate. The second way is to work with nature, to let the vegetation grow. The vegetation has such positive impacts. To let the weeds grow, understand what they're providing, and to feed the soil. And so if we think of water as Earth's blood, the vegetation is what's providing shelter for the Earth's body so that that blood can enter and hydrate it. And so it's really important that that water is moving through multiple times. It's feeding all of the areas. And we do that by working with diverse vegetation. The different species are accumulating different nutrients and using different nutrients, growing to different root depths. And so by working together in a polyculture instead of a monoculture, we can have really productive areas that help build the fertility and the infiltration rates of the soil. The third way is that forests plant the rain, so plant forests. We're understanding more and more how forests drive the precipitation cycles with hygroscopic nuclei and with thermal effects in low pressure systems, changes in humidity and temperature. So we need to protect what remains of these forests. We need to establish new forests to recover what we've lost. And we need to work on agroforestry to develop our agricultural systems into forestry systems so that we can produce our food, fuel, and medicine while restoring the landscape. The fourth way is to prime the pump, to understand that we have this biotic pump that ecosystems are their own generative system that we can prime, and how irrigation might be needed to help get the process going in some of the harsher areas. So we have this beautiful biotic pump where the vegetation cycles are controlling the temperature of the soil. They're also controlling the humidity. And so we have all this water vapor in the air as it's condensing around those precipitation nuclei from the trees. It's forming clouds and then rain. It's creating a low pressure system. It's pulling in more moisture from the coast. It falls as rain. The trees produce more low pressure as they respire. And it drives this moisture from the oceans through the Earth's continents. So it's really important that we recognize this biotic pump. We can see it in some areas like the Amazon, where the Amazon not only drives the water vapor that moves through itself, but it moves water vapor through the whole continent. So if we lose that forest, we lose the precipitation throughout the whole continent. So we wanna work with those main flows. We wanna find those areas where humid currents are entering into the Earth's continents and really help that effect help prime that pump so that the water goes further and further inland. 
Now, the fifth way is to move from the old water paradigm to the new water paradigm. So we need to understand what the old is and why it was in place, why we need to change, and what is the new water paradigm. So the old water paradigm started 10 to 12,000 years ago in the Levant, in the Fertile Crescent, where people domesticated animals, they invented the plow, and they started really changing the vegetative cover of the earth. Not only that, but as our agricultural productivity increased, so did our population centers. We started to have more waste, and this waste was just being thrown in the streets and carried downhill by water. Water had turned into the garbage man for all of the waste. So around these civilizations, anywhere that there was standing water, pooling water, it meant an accumulation of disease, of feces, of all of these nasty things coming off of the civilization. So in order for civilization to grow, we needed to drain this water away. We needed to move it downstream away from our things that we were building. Now we've continued this trajectory to today. Every time we build a road, we build a home, we build anything, we start by draining the water away from that landscape. And in this way, we've turned rivers into concrete aqueducts. This is the LA River. It used to be a river that flowed year round. Now when there's a rain, it's a rushing torrent and otherwise it's dry. We've concreted this whole landscape. So instead of that water, feeding life throughout the whole land, now it's just being hardened and sent right away into the ocean. And so the sixth way is awareness. It's really important for you to be aware, where does your water come from? How is it treated on its path? And is the rain that your land receives rejected or received? And so where does your water come from? Is it coming from high up and is it being drained from the landscape, taken away from the landscape into concrete pipes and aqueducts and dehydrating a whole area just to bring you water? Or is the water coming from your immediate surroundings? Is it healthy, vital water? It's being brought to you by the natural systems. Seventh is all about transforming your relationship with the natural world. These days we're so tied up in a destructive relationship, but we can go from destruction to co-creation. We can partner with nature and create these really incredible things by working with the natural forces. We can go from degenerates, degenerating our climate, degenerating our watersheds, gen generating the health of our environment, to generates of water abundance, of healthy ecosystems, and of balanced climate. And so we can learn from nature, we can learn from this beautiful world around us, and we can take all of the innovations available. We can learn how to cultivate the landscape in a way that really produces our own food and medicine, our own livelihoods, but also helps the landscape at large, helps our co-living beings live a better life. And we can produce areas where it's more productive than ever before by working with these natural cycles with no fertilizers, no chemicals. We can produce these amazing yields of these diverse species when we really work with nature. Are you ready to rejuvenate landscapes restore ecosystems, and even revive rivers? To move beyond the theory and start practicing ecosystem regeneration? To succeed, you'll need skills, support, and confidence. It's why I created the Water Stories core course, to empower you to heal landscapes and revive waterways with your own hands and heart. I've spent the past decade implementing projects all around the world, not theoretical designs, but real results on land. I put all of the lessons I've learned from working with legends like Sepp Holzer and Rajendra Singh into this course. The Water Stories core course gives you everything you need to actualize projects on the ground and in your community. For each module, actions guide you through the experiences you'll need to become competent and then confident reading and regenerating land. From the technical aspects of earthworks and ecosystem establishment, to the personal development you'll need to be effective, to providing a business roadmap for success, this course offers a transformational experience that reshapes your relationship with water, land, and life. As hopeful as I was when we began, even I've been surprised how quickly it's delivered results for our students. No matter where you live and no matter your background, you can help heal the earth with water cycle restoration. Check the link below for upcoming courses and I'll see you in class. 
Now, eighth is about achieving water neutrality and striving for beneficial. It's about understanding your water bank, how you can be efficient with your water, and how changes to snowpack and glacier over time is gonna make us need that beneficial relationship with water. So we can look at the earth as our piggy bank of water. Now, if we treat it as a bank account, if you're always making withdrawals from your bank account and never adding deposits, you go broke and it gets to a really bad situation really quickly. The same is happening with the water in the ground. If we're always making bigger deposits than withdrawals, we always have water when we need it. So we can look at our impact. We are usually building homes and roads. We're making areas where we're shunting water off the landscape. So we can create terraces and water bodies, infiltration basins, where we let that water return to the earth. So we can first just strive to be neutral, where our impact on the land isn't creating more runoff than before. We have a net neutral impact. We're infiltrating as much as we're running off. And over time, we want to become beneficial with that relationship so that we're recharging the ground, we're building up the aquifer. Then when we have a big drought year, we have a water supply to draw upon. And last and really important is outreach. This is one of the ways that it's gonna take all of us. We're gonna to need to educate one another. We're gonna to need to advocate for a healthy water system. And we're all in this together. We're all part of Team Earth. And so we need to work together to achieve this. All around the world, from the tops of the mountains to the oceans, we've created some impact. And we can have a beneficial impact no matter where we are in that water cycle. But we need to understand the full water cycle. We need to understand all of the factors at play and how we can really be a positive force. We can help these natural cycles take place. We need to understand the watershed death spiral, how through our land management, through our forestry management, our agricultural practices, we've created these cycles of flood, drought, and fire. We've created these long droughts. We've created these horrific cloudburst storm events. And this is all stuff that we can reverse as well. And so we need to understand how we can restore the water cycle, how humans can act as the keystone species to restore the biosystems that support life on this planet. We need to understand the new water paradigm and help others understand how there is this vision and strategy for retaining water around the earth and re-greening even the harshest environments. We need to really transform watersheds into water catchments. We call them watersheds and we've really turned them into watersheds where we're draining all the water away. We need to transform them back into water catchments where the rain that's received is held in the ground, is stored in the ground and is charging up that natural hydrology. And we can do it in a really beautiful way that creates beautiful environments for humans, beautiful environments for wildlife and an abundant future for our children and offspring. And we can create communities that are water abundant and actually recharging more water than they're using. And we can restore even the harshest places like the desert in Rajasthan to these vibrant communities that again have agriculture, again have economy, again have a viable way to live. So no matter where you are in the top of the watershed or in the bottom, there's something you can do. There are ways that you can really make a difference. And it's gonna take all of us together to create this difference. That's why it's so important wherever you are to participate in this change. We've created these cycles of flood, drought, and fire, but we can also create a different future. We can all act collectively and help create a better common future for our planet and ourselves.